right, so we have a 2014 Honda Accord Sport 2.4 liter four cylinder engine. It's got 207,000 miles about, and all of the oil changes have been done using Mobile One Zero W20. I use Mobile One filters as well. At 200,000 miles, we've seen a couple, a couple serpentine belts, replaced them before they failed. Uh, I've seen, obviously, all the fluids and coolants gone through, done two sets of spark plugs, did the plugs again not too long ago, I have a video on that. But then it came time, I got a little bit of seepage where the valve cover's at, and I thought I should probably actually document tearing into this. Now, I started it last night, and I'd have been, I mean, you can take this valve cover off in about five minutes if you fly through it. But I realized I should at least explain what I was doing. So, step one, uh, you're going to take this little cover off. You got five little bolts. They got a cool little shoulder on them. Uh, they're just 10 millimeter. You're going to put that off to the side. You're going to pop this off. This is just kind of held in place with a couple little rubber gaskets. Lifts right up. I've got a piece of cardboard on the roof of the car that I'm using to store everything. You've got to get some harnesses out of the way. So disconnect your battery terminal. Then you're going to undo the 10 millimeter bolt associated with the alternator. Remove a couple of these clips. Take over. Uh, you got a clip that goes to the alternator and the one that pops down at the AC compressor. You're going to lift this up to a point. You're going to have to unclip all of the, the coils and lay all this kind of back off to the side. I did notice there was another connector here that looks like it goes to the, uh, what was that, like the, the intake. So this all just kind of slips back out of the way. I think I tucked it back here. Call it a day. You're going to have your a tube that's essentially associated with your uh, PCV. Uh, that's basically the vent for the upper part of your uh, valve cover. I did replace that as well. You got a hose here that's uh, sitting on your intake uh, or your valve cover. You're going to have to disconnect that. You got a little clip, so you'll be utilizing obviously your needle nose pliers to loosen that clip. You got needle nose pliers for that one. You got a 10 millimeter to take all of your coil packs out. I do keep them in order based on the cylinder that they're on. Not saying you have to do that, but I certainly like to. And again, I've already loosened all these, so that's why they're popping right off. Your filler cap's gonna, you know, wanna come off as well. Now that you got all the stuff pulled back off of the way, you have some 10 millimeter bolts, and then you actually have some T20 Torx heads on the top of the valve cover. And they're just screws, they just pop right off. Nothing crazy about them. Obviously having a place to store all of your fasteners makes a lot of sense. Uh, I did notice that I was getting a little bit of oil in cylinder one around the spark plug boot. So that tells me that the gasket around here around the cylinder well probably wasn't perfect day one. Uh, wasn't enough oil that I was overly concerned about it. I have noticed in the past 100,000 miles in a, in a 7 to 10,000 mile range, which is about the oil change interval that I've been doing, uh, I've been basing it on the oil, fil the oil life that the uh, engine tells me about and the car tells me about. I drive a lot. Uh, one of the things you want to take into consideration when you're deciding what you're going to do for oil changes is uh, how much certain stop traffic you're going. So I'm going to mute this here. So you got clips at a couple different spots and actually I have another clip that's hiding back here. Uh, the hit, it, there's actually clips on several spots around here so when I'm trying to remove clips I'm usually going to use a pair of tools that I can try and get to both sides of that clip housing so I can pop it loose. Pull this off. So what I was screwing around with over here was this clip. It sits down there. Uh, as I mentioned before, you got a hose for your PCB. Get another clip back here. You can kind of see it there. It's, it's actually pretty annoying. And then, you know, you got this here. It's 
goes to your one of your upper O2 sensors. Just kind of slides right on there. You just got to slide that off. Um, the only thing we're left with now, this is essentially loose, is when I lift this up, I've already kind of loosened around there. So when I lift this up, I'll actually be able to probably pull that off a little bit easier. But figured I'd work on getting that loose. Um, all I did was just kind of use this as a spot to lift up. But I'll get the camera back in a position where you can see what it looks like. This hose pops bigger. right off. And, well, I mean, it's been on over 200,000 miles, but we are free and clear. Let's take a look. See what she looks like. Alrighty. Well, I gotta say, it's pretty awesome to take this off for the first time after 200,000 miles and see something that looks that pretty. So, yay Honda. That's what I'm gonna say about that. That is a yay Honda. Um, now, like I said, I mentioned I was getting some oil seepage around cylinder one, and I guess that's probably because that seal wasn't okay. But hey, um, the, get, the gasket kit comes with four seals for your tubes that are associated with your coil packs, and obviously the molded gasket that goes around. Thumbs up to Honda for providing a molded gasket. Uh, this is actually really pretty. I'm very happy with that. Let me get a different angle so you can take a look. Notice that we have these two seals stuck on the tubes and the other two uh, stayed in the head. Not a big deal. But let's take a look and uh, it looks, looks really good. I'm actually uh, quite, quite pleased with what I'm seeing here. You know, we, uh, we don't see any sludge. Nothing gross. Everything's nice and shiny. It's been sitting, hasn't, the engine hasn't ran for the last two weeks because I've been doing some other stuff on the suspension. So, oil's had plenty of time to recede back down, but yeah, it's, it's pretty clean. You can see the multiple cam lobes on the intake side. It's all very pretty. I'm happy. Uh, once you get the old valve cover off, you got to go through and you got to clean all these surfaces. What I do is use brake clean with a uh, strip of Scotch Brite and go over all these surfaces. And additionally, you have mating surfaces and mating seams associated with, like, say, the timing cover to the to the upper head, and then where the head meets this multi-part assembly. Uh, each one of those seams comes from the factory with a little bit of RTV black. And well, in this case, it's just a version of RTV. Uh, RTV black is good for oil resistance. Red is good for coolant resistance. So we'll use a little bit of black here. And what I'll have to do is I'll have to, A, get the old material off, fully off, and it's aluminum. So don't be running on it with a screwdriver. Just take your time, piece of scotch bright, and just work at it, work at it, work at it. Um, don't get brake clean in here though. Like don't spray on here. Like, Spray your brake clean on your piece away from your car. Don't get it on your paint. Then transfer it over, scrub for a bit, and then you know replenish and replace this as needed. Uh, but keep in mind that you gotta get all these surfaces perfectly clean, uh, remove all the grime, remove any material that's left on it. Once it's fully clean, then you can go through, clean the valve cover itself. And then once that's clean, then we can begin reassembly. But wanted to make sure that we touched on there's one, two, three, four, five, six locations where we have to clean, remove a bit of factory RTV, and then put new RTV. I pulled the tire off, rotated the uh, crankshaft clockwise in 180 degree increments to check the valve clearances. You'll notice that you have two valves per cylinder. And when you get a valve, uh, wait, so you take your measurement when you have that cylinder at top dead center. So that means both valves are closed. And you can see this cam's over here, and this cam lobe's over there. Neither one of them are putting pressure on the valves. You have a little bit of play there. Uh, intake is eight to 10 thousandths, 0 0.008 to 0 0.010. 0 .010. And the exhaust is 10 to 11 thousandths, 0 0.010 0 .0 to 0 0.011. They were all pretty close. They were all within spec. I had one that was a little bit tighter on 10 than the rest, but still pretty decent. And I had one on the eight that was a little looser, but again, still like within, within my eight to 10. So that's good news. If you're gonna do this, take it apart. That's certainly something to check. And then obviously 
pay attention to your chain guides uh, for your timing chain. Take a look at the wear and the condition of that. You're just paying attention to everything that's inside here, making sure it all looks great. Um, you know, you're going to look in your cylinder wells any time that you take your spark plugs out, but obviously oil inside there would be a sign of anything that's leaking. I didn't have to clean those, but I did get inside there and replace those not too long ago. So we're ready for a little bit of uh, one more final pass with uh, some brake clean on a rag, and then we'll do the cover and some RTV. You're about to see that I did not detail the reinstallation of this. You have to be very careful as you install the gasket, then flip it upside down and have the gasket not leave. A few dabs of RTV can hold it in place. I also clean the valve cover, as you can see. I recommend that. Clean everything inside and out. If you have a part off, clean it before you reinstall it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next steps and what it looks like when I'm all done. Where I cleaned, it's nice and shiny. That's where it was leaking before. So I'll have a pretty good indication that uh, I, this seal works over time. You can see these little flaps there. You can see a little flap there too. You can see them all the way around. So those flaps kind of help you know that you got your gasket seated. But you do want to check to make sure. Uh, I didn't even have to clean the leaves out. You want to check to make sure that you didn't pinch your gasket or get it wrapped up on itself. But yeah, it's good to go. It's cleaner. Everything's put back together. Uh, the installation is the reverse of removal, as most manuals will tell you. So, you know, you got the five, ten millimeters, hold this plastic cover on. Like I said, this one just pops off. Uh, when you go put things back together, you put them in the opposite order. You legitimately do. Uh, you have to lay this fuel rail back on uh, before you obviously put any covers on. This is tucked underneath and helps if you take photos of your installation as you go step by step. So you always have a reference of what something looked like, but when you were reassembling it, especially if it's gonna be more than a few hours. But we're good to go. Uh, you can see I'm kind of shiny here and I don't have any leaks. I did take it for a little drive. So I let the RTV sit for a couple hours, about three or so, uh, starting to get dark now. So I wanted to run it, but we're good to go. If you ever have to take off valve cover, you should be able to do it in a couple hours, replace your gasket. But other than that, peace cake. If you have any questions, let me know.